I recently featured a DIY project on my website on how to make a universal PID temperature controller. In this video, I will show you how I made this enclosure using my CNC router. I designed the enclosure to be cut with a laser. When cutting with a laser, you seldom have to worry about uh, the cut radius because it's so small. This is not the case when cutting parts with a CNC router. I needed to reduce the radius of the cuts as much as possible. For this reason, I will be using a 1 16th inch end mill to cut the panels out of 3 millimeter closed cell PVC. The closed cell PVC is soft enough that the 1 16th inch cutting radius won't affect assembly. I exported the CAD files and loaded them into my CAM software. Here I'm using V-Carve to create the tool pass for the 1 16th inch end mill and the 3 millimeter stock. The tool paths are loaded into Mach 3 and a 14 by 11 piece of stock and waster board are clamped to the machine. We're using a uh, 1 16th inch uh, two flute up spiral end mill. We're running the spindle at 18,000 RPMs uh, with a feed rate of 40 inches per minute and a plunge rate of 40 inches per minute. The depth of cut is .04 inches and we're using a quarter inch ramp. Now I could have cut a lot more aggressive on this but I only had 1 16th inch a bit available so I decided to take it uh, very easy here. Because I wanted to film the uh, actual machining of the pieces, I didn't use a dust shroud. So one of the first things I do after the job's done is to uh, vacuum up all the, uh, the uh, debris. Notice how some of the parts have actually uh, uh, come loose. Um, I later had to go back and adjust the, uh, the tab depth so this wouldn't happen. Next I pulled off uh, the protective coating on the uh, Sintra I have here. Um, some of it that you'll get from Amazon won't have this protective coating. That's It'll still cut with it. It's just going to be a cleaner cut with it on there. Mm -hmm. 
the process is repeated on the second set of panels. The parts are vacuumed. And the protective film is removed. Once the panels have been cut, I use some flush cut pliers to uh, remove the small holding tabs. With the panels now complete, it's time for assembly. I install four number 632 times 3 inch machine screws. Uh, with washers into what will become uh, the left side panel. I install the front panel by inserting the small tabs into the slits on the side panel. I install the top panel the same way. These panels are secured with one of the temporary assembly tabs. I add a washer and acorn nut. The rear panel is then installed. And it is secured with one of the temporary assembly tabs. A washer and acorn nut are then added. The bottom panel is then installed. These are uh, 
this panel is then secured with two, the remaining two uh, temporary assembly tabs. A washer and an acorn nut are added. The four feet are installed into the bottom panel. Stage one of the um, enclosure assembly is now complete. We can start uh, installing the components. I have a set of step-by-step -step instructions up on my website. Uh, detailing all the components, how to test them, how to install them, configuration, and whatnot. So be sure you check it out. Once all the components have been installed and tested, uh, the temporary assembly tabs are removed and the other side panel is installed. It's best to work on one side and then make your way over. Um, it, you, it also might help if you're having a lot of trouble to secure one corner with a washer and an acorn nut. But in any case, um, this is how it's done. That's it. The enclosure turned out better than I expected. Um, if you're interested in building this project, uh, please feel free to visit my website and check it out. Uh, all the instructions are there as far as links to where you can get all the components. Until next time.